I think one thing people have to realize about banks, right? They're large and complex organizations with different business units with different requirements, right? And so, you know, when you think about, you know, transformation at a banking level on the technology layer, it impacts so many various different business units, right? It, it might be beneficial for one uh, and and not beneficial for another, right? And so you have these components that are there that, you know, don't create efficiency. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, an example is we were, we were talking to a bank recently and they said, you know, for the same ID, there are over a hundred identifiers used throughout the bank for this singular asset, right? Um, and so, you know, when you're interacting across the bank and you're basically saying, I'm referencing this specific asset, because there's so many ways that you identify that asset from one group to another group, uh, it doesn't correlate, right? And that means there's inefficiency in settlement, there's inefficiency in, re in recognizing the asset. One of the things that we think the blockchain does is it, it creates a singular basis for which folks can identify assets, right? And, and the blockchain in general, like this level of transparency that will start to exist by an asset being defined and put on the blockchain, right? So when you're talking about a bond or you're talking about a tokenized dollar, you know, not only can you reference that asset and where it exists on the blockchain, but that serves as a central point of visibility for the entire organization to manage how that asset interacts across multiple different business lines, right? And I think that becomes, you know, the game changer for, for how this exists. I think people talk about transparency, they talk about speed, right? But they don't talk about the idea of rationalization across the organization when you implement this new technology stack. So you're seeing banks kind of make this, you know, pace of adoption shift, right? Where they're trying to plug in blockchain against legacy systems and then start to port that over. I think you're seeing, you know, the forward thinking banks say that, you know, digitized assets are going to be the way that the world works. And when we look at things like custody and, 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 and asset management, right? We look at them in the context of putting them on the blockchain and rationalizing the complexity that exists in the organization across the assets that we manage and what that means for optimizing workflows and processes, right? And I think that is the real beneficial factor of what we're seeing on the blockchain side. I think that's why there's been kind of this spurring of urgency, I think, across banks to say, hey, let's look at tokenization use cases and how they'll impact our business operations, how they impact kind of risk management that we have, how they'll kind of start to uh, get rid of legacy systems and allow us to kind of move forward at, at a pace and scale that we need to in order to compete with newer upstarts. You know, think about the Revoluts and the N26s. And I think you can see, you know, the folks like Coinbase and Kraken, you know, they're going to start venturing into the traditional banking sector as well, right? And so they don't have that legacy infrastructure to build up against. And so their models to which they can take to market and take advantage of consumer uh, preferences will be stronger, right? And, and banks need to react to that uh, they need to be aware of the institutions that they're working with and, and their need to you know, get towards faster settlement, uh, more efficiency, higher transparency, um, and, and banks are starting to make that shift overall.